Oh, look at all the legumes, all the mimosoid peas coming out the horse shit. Look how big those first those first seed leaves are, those two cotyledons. Then you get the whole pinnate thing coming on. I might eat, you know what? I might eat some of these, some, uh, some mesquite. I don't even know if that's prosopis or what. Whatever it is, it might be Parkinsonia, actually. Whatever it is, I'm going to eat it. Then I'm going to take a shit and see what comes out of it. Uh, yeah, hey, this is, uh, this is Tony. We could do it here. Look at all this, uh, mammillaria, mammillaria carnia right there. Look at, like, some sort of damn, like those tribbles in Star Trek. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays, but Botany doesn't. Today, uh, I's coming to you from the sacred cactus forest of Puebla State, Mexico. Right there near, near the, uh, Puebla, Oaxaca border. Look at that hectia. Bromelia trying to be an agave. A pineapple trying to be an agave. Anyway, uh, got some good stuff going on, okay? A lot of, a lot of interesting uh, plants, plants you wouldn't see anywhere else. Elevation here is, I don't know, a little bit less than 5,000 feet, so we are still pretty high up, okay? It looks hot, but it's not as hot as you would think. Once you've endured the Texas heat, you can do anything. Look at it. Senna wislizinia with those little yellow fabid paper lantern flowers. Uh, agave Karwinski, I call this an agave. Anyway, a lot of nice stuff going on here. Geology here is uh, Cretaceous calcareous sediments because of that whole inland ocean that existed in much of North America during the Cretaceous. You know, before the, before the dinosaurs got taken out by that comet that slammed into the Yucatan. So we're gonna see what's going on. We're gonna show you some really interesting cacti. Uh, looks, it almost, it's so perfect that it almost looks like a little garden. Okay, you got a kind of cactus platyacanthus. This right here is a Neobux Balmia to Tetso, which is a dominant forest here, at least at the lower elevations. You also get Cephalosirius columna trahani at the higher elevations, but uh, Cephalosirius tends not to branch, and they kind of bend towards the top. You see, they get the Temis scale, so you could come on here and do a sweat lodge, you know, maybe take some mescaline, all right, which is entirely harmless. Did you know that caffeine is an LD50 at like 160? per kilogram of body weight, body weight and mescaline's LD50 is like 850 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So caffeine is more toxic than mescaline, okay? But that's what you could do. To, I'm not saying you should, but I'm just saying maybe, you know, I don't know. It's also hard to come by though. So try to get synthetic. A lot of these cacti, these columnar cacti look the same, but there's actually, you know, four or five different species here. Nice feral cactus. It's either recurvus or lattice spinus. I think it's recurvus. Some goddamn old punches, I have no idea. They're beautiful, I just, you know, got no clue what the shit. I, I, I try not to mess with the old punches too much. Myrtillo cactus, geometrizanes, the blueberry cactus over there. Quite common in uh, cultivation. Edible fruit, I mean, all cactus fruit's edible, but you know, some of it's not too palatable. Anyway, uh, let's keep going. Okay, now this is a great place to see those Cretaceous marine sediments I was telling you about. It's also a nice spot to see Bocarnia gracilis, which gets sold in the Home Despo Garden Center a lot. But, uh, you know, here it can reach its full height. Okay, they'll, they'll reach their full height in areas of South Texas too, but you see that? Uh, the Nolina subfamily of the asparagus family, after APG fucked everything up with their taxonomy change. Okay, you rarely see these guys, you know, that big, at least in the United States. You often see them in a pot. They'll stay bonsai in a pot forever, but here, of course, they can reach heights of 30 feet, and they have a huge, uh, huge trunk that at the, at the base of it that looks like an elephant foot. Okay, but see, you can see all the... Uh, erosion and weathering that's been going on here for some time. You can see over there you got the Pelasgia, that that uh, candelabra looking thing, Pelasgia chichipe. It, you know, it could also be Escontria chiotia, but uh, you know, I don't know. It's hard to say without being up close. All right, let's keep going. Now this massive bastard, which I'm trying not to get impaled on, is Agave kerchovii. There's like four or five different species of agave here. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, you get the, your Kynocactus platyacanthus, your bisnaga down there. Those can, of course, turn into massive bastards. So agave kerchovii, relatively rare and localized. And then uh, down here, it looks like you got a... Oh, this is just grass. I thought, no, here's an echiandia. Yeah, it looks like it's an uh, echiandia. Echiandia flavescens. Cool monocot, another member of the uh, asparagaceae. You like, uh, you like the monocots? You like asparagales, the order? Orchids are in that order too. Look at that little agave ceiling. Holy shit, look at that cute little bastard. Now this, this broad-leaved bastard, you could see no hairs, just a lot of wax. This is a species of plumeria, which is another abuelita plant. It's another granny garden plant. Beautiful member of Apocinaceae, probably some very toxic phytochemistry, like most members of Apocinaceae. 
and uh, very pleasant smelling flowers uh, when they bloom. And they, they're of course drought deciduous, so they can drop all those big broad leaves right there. Oh, see that man? See, just got that big red conspicuous fruit to get a bird down there to, you know, to eat it and then uh, fly off with it and shit it out somewhere. I believe it's Mammillaria hagiana, but don't quote me on it. There's so many goddamn mams here. Fuzzy white mams. Evolvulus alcinoides. Nice little member of the sweet potato family, the morning glory family, convolvulaceae, with the little purple radar disc of flowers. And then the leaves, of course, alternating and covered in hairs, which give them kind of a chalky white appearance. What's that calyx like, look like? We always got, don't forget the calyx. You always got to look at the calyx, you sleaze bag. Get in there, get up in there, see that? All right, because those sepals are diagnostic too. All right, got to get the gestalt. So next time you see, you know what the gestalt of a plant is, next time you see it, you'll know what the shit you're looking at. Okay, even if it's a different species in the same genus. The goddamn feral cactus, look at that. Look, the beta lanes and the spines, all right? When they're still young and idealistic about the world, before they get all, all grizzled and crusty on the outside and develop a very mean exterior, scarred interior. Exterior, fuck, what am I talking about? I don't know. Anyway, there you go, feral cactus. Is it lattice spinous or a curvus? I don't know, but it's a fucking banger. Like most feral cactus tend to be. And there's that hectia again. A fucking bromelia just coming up in the grass. You know, this, we got this whole, oh, this is a banger right here. Agave macroacantha. Look at it. My friend Jeremy Spath grows these. He grows them from seed. He's got tons of them. All right, you got to check out his nursery. He's not paying me to say this either. I just fucking love the guy. All right, hidden agave. Hidden agave, you could get some of these. Look at that beautiful color. That glaucous blue. And I don't think they form pups. Oh, no, maybe they do. That looks like a pup right there. Agave macroacantha. What a banger. We got this all this erosion. Nothing these boots can't handle, though. You know, as long as you buy the American uh, made Red Wings, that's just what I go with because the railroad used to buy it for us before they were too cheap and they canceled the contract. But as long as you get the American ones, not the ones that are made in China, they won't fall apart. That is, like, really offensive. That is, like, like, this, is this supposed to be a fucking penis? Like, I don't want to see that. Leo Books Balmy has got a nice, oh, look, don't want to fall in a hole. Holy shit, that's actually like 20 feet deep. I could die. Uh, anyway, you can see it looks like the, the Neo Books Balmy has started to fall in the hole, but the roots saved it and then it's grown back up. So that's a nice, nice architecture. Look at it. The ground is just, it just opens up. Man, you got to watch out with this calcareous geology. You'll never get this in volcanics. You're never going to get sinkholes in volcanics well maybe you sometimes do it depends if they got gypsum in the ground but if there's gypsum in the ground it uh, reacts with the water gets carried away limestone too of course but at a little bit slower of a rate and this when you end up you got to watch where you step man you never know did you like my uh my karen voice my uh mean white woman voice can you tell i have some experience with it good that so you got this piece this rock looks like it's almost a conglomerate limestone maybe it was more resistant to the weathering than the other and then the, the surrounding bed of mud stones and shales and so it, uh, it hung in there and it's formed a nice little nursery for some of these cute little mams again it's this is not it's like 80 degrees right now it's not that bad it's like tucson in the springtime okay this is definitely sketchy this is kind of sketchy so you want to walk close to the the larger land masses and uh be ready to catch yourself this is yeah this is kind of hairy okay here we go now here's a plant we get in South Texas, Castilla erecta. Member of the Atlantis family, Simarubaceae. There's those flowers. The new growth has kind of a velvety texture to it. Sessile leaves and uh, red fruits when it matures. You know, so the birds come by, pick it up. So we got Prosopis. I think that's, a, yeah, that's a Prosopis. Acting, there's so many goddamn legume species. Acting as a nursery, giving a little bit of shade. To this whole community, you got a sedum. Is that a, is that a sedum? I can't even tell. Crassulaceae is the family on that for sure. You got three different species of mammillaria. You got selaginella. You got a little mam just hanging out right there in, a, in the uh, ensconced in this eroding and weathering substrate, covered with the lichens and the cyanobacteria and the selaginella and mosses and what the shit. So three different species of mammillaria, you got Talansia recrovata, same species you get in Texas, that ball moss, but this appears to be a little bit more white. A few more trichomes on this ecotype. Dangerous pit in the ground, and just the whole cactus nursery. Agave marmorata, that guy's a fucking banger. The drunken agave, because it's got all these wobbly stems that don't really stay straight. And then just ball moss and everything. 
upping the shade. It looks like the mesquite's dying back though, but they're tough bastards, you know, so it'll be fine. Nice cicadas just singing to us. Very sketchy walking here. I would not like to fall in a hole. This will all be gone probably in a couple hundred years. You'll have a more open canyon. But uh, you could see that it's creating a very nice landscape. The soft and uh, easily weathering nature of this uh, sedimentary rack, well, sedimentary substrate, is, uh, is creating a beautiful little landscape, a beautiful little cactus garden. Got Myrtillo cactus. You got the, this other Mammillaria species with the longer spines. Kind of looks like Carnia. Actually, that might be Carnia. And then you got this nice little... What is that? A Graptopetalum? Crassulaceae is the family here. Crassulaceae is the family on this guy. You can see those red pigments. You know Crassulaceae is a... Oh, look at that beautiful... That beautiful lichen. Crassulaceae is an order of Did you know that? I don't think you knew that. Just a surreal landscape. We're trying to get to the other side, though, without dying or falling in a hole. Look at that. You had somebody, somebody was having a meal. Some bird was having a snail meal there. Just cracking them open and left the remnants. Like pottery sherds. But they're, I bet they're uh, recent, though. I very, I very much doubt they're old, but who knows? Everything's eroding out of this. And it looks like we're cliffed out right here. There's no, uh, no going any further. Oh, fuck. God damn, you know, the sedimentary stuff. I just, uh, you just never know where those sinkholes might be. Lamero Sirius right there, Hylianus. How about that? Okay, you know, I don't know. Maybe those are, maybe those, those pieces of pottery are a little bit older than I thought. Because, uh, there's quite a few and they're all eroding out of the... Here's what looks to be some sort of lithic tool, possibly. Yeah, I don't know. People have been living here for a very, very long time. You know, some of the museums in the region, they, God, they got a, they got these artifacts, these pieces, just beautiful. You know, there, there was a, it was a really advanced culture here, aside from the whole human sacrifice thing, which maybe wasn't happening here. Maybe it was a little bit more rosy here, you know? Maybe people didn't feel like they had to do that. Look at that. That's, I mean... I guess there could be some guy, you know, who was out here 20 years ago, uh, you know, with a couple pots and dropped them. I don't know. They could also be 500 years old or a few thousand years old. Who knows? Oh, look at that nice cylindro punch over there. Mean-ass choya. How about that? Choyas are so pretty. You know, the genus cylindro puncher, they're also, it's one of the meanest cacti genera. It's probably the meanest cacti genera in the world. Genus in the world. Is it agave marmorata? Nice little man. And you got a Grisonia here too. Ah, fuck. Look at that, that uh, Lamero Sirius will never be able to live up to its full potential. Because it's growing right above a 20 foot sinkhole. You know, that would, got it. Fucking, <laughs> jeez. Let's get out of here. Came up. Look at that nice young Myrtillo cactus. And uh, Chingos de Mammillaria. See that? Chingos de Mammillaria. Just got them everywhere. Look at that. Mammillaria carnia. Mammillaria hydra, I used to do that in South Texas, but I think all the feral pigs dug them up. They look for uh, insects that are feeding on the roots. You can't see you can't see mam clumps like that in uh, Texas no more. I thought the sinkholes were getting a little bit easier and maybe not as deep, but I, I stand corrected. Anyway, wonderful species of bursera right here. You can see that the pachycorum trunk, that's the name, uh, elephant tree, frankincense family, and uh, you take those leaves off and you crush them up, and I got some nice terpenes in there. Smells pretty good, all right? The fruit is a little droop. See, like a little single-seeded berry. And, uh, you know, they just do their thing. Some of them get some of them get big. You got Bursera simaruba in Florida, of course. It's a large tree. Uh, this guy, I mean, he'd probably get bigger if he wasn't growing on a goddamn, on a cliff above a sinkhole, but uh, who knows? They don't, maybe they don't get that big to begin with. those echino cactus when they're young look at it look at those striations they get on them holy hell it's a banger they're not going to look like that in 20 years it'll just be a big a big blue blob but uh still quite beautiful and here we go agave macroacantha sending off uh offshoots sending off pups which you know you don't, i don't see him doing it that much you can see it since agave or monocarpic this guy already died 
All right, those fruits are maturing, those capsule fruits, the flowers are done. And uh, looks like somebody gnawed off his, uh, probably a cow gnawed off his inflorescence, but he was still able to get one branch of that inflorescence, inflorescence out there in flower. And then probably got hit by a, a moth or a bat or whatever to ship on this thing. Maybe some bees. And now they're done and those fruits are maturing. There'll be a bunch of little black flaky seeds inside. But he's also got the, the uh, offsets. I love this species. Oh. A young Neo Bucks. Look at it. I got one of those in my yard in Texas. Does well. It's about that height. Not as plump though. Parkinsonia praecox. Another version of a Palo Verde. Could see uh, the beautiful green. All right, ethnobotanically, it's good for use as a rectal poultice. Just kidding. I just, you know, I figured, I don't know, I just, you know, throw some stuff in every once in a while. Photosynthetic stem so it can drop those leaves in times of drought, in times of stress, like maybe in the winter when it's not raining as much. Most, most of the rain seems to come in summer. And there's that Bocarnia. There's that Bocarnia grassless with that massive trunk. The quote-unquote ponytail palm. God, if that's not a stupid name, I don't know what is. Look at that thing. Beautiful texture on you, old boy. Wait, wait, wait. So for a Monica, you can see how massive these get. Just a massive bastard. When they don't get knocked back by a freeze. And so I assume, well, you know, Monocots don't have secondary growth. They got anomalous secondary growth, but so it's not quite like a tree where it's dead on the inside. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Don't ask me about the physiology of uh, Bocarnia. I just like them. Look, that whole thing, is the, it's got to weigh as much as a Honda. God, what, what an incredible, what an incredible organism. What the shit? Here's the old flower stalks up there. Okay, so here's uh, Solanum houstonia. It might be a synonym for Solanum tridanum. But either way, uh, Solanum is the large genus, same genus as uh, tomatoes and potatoes. And uh, you got to look at those flowers because they got something very interesting going on. You see the flower on the right just has that one, the uh, the yellow anthers are, are basically done. And now it's got that white style. That's the female part kind of curving out. And then the flower on the left uh, has the anthers ready and it doesn't have any style coming out at all. So the flower on the left is in the male phase, the flower on the right is in the female phase. The flower on the left, you can see it's got two different kinds of anthers too, like three bottom banana shaped ones, and then two up at the top that are uh, providing uh, basically food pollen. So they, they, don't provide, they don't provide nectar, they're getting the bees in there to get the pollen out of those top two anthers. In doing so, the bee gets dusted on the bottom of its stomach with pollen from those bottom three anthers and then flies to another flower that's hopefully in the female phase and that white style picks up that pollen and gets pollinated. Also interesting to note, if you look at those anthers, they don't, uh, they don't dehiss longitudinally. They got pores at the end of them for the buzz pollination. Porocidal anthers for buzz pollination. So the bee vibrates its wings and pollen just dusts out of those anthers right there, out of those, those holes in the end of them. See that? So dimorphic anthers, and uh, they're probably protandrous too. Will this go into the female phase when these are done? Looks like that's what happened here. Actually, you know what? Looking at this now, I don't think that uh, this is a protandrous flower. I think it's just a male flower. See, there's an ovary here, that spiky thing. So that's going to be a maturing fruit. And uh, this doesn't even have it. So I think that's just a male flower. I don't think there. I don't think there's even a style in there. So that means this this species is monoecious, unisexual flowers. How about that? And there's the fruit when it matures. See, so there's there's the ovary after all the petals and all the shit have fallen off. How did I don't you love desert hibiscus? Hibiscus phoenicius. Look at it, just coming up in the shade of a giant Bertillo cactus. Hey, let's see. The sexy parts right there. Get all those stamens whirled around that central column and then that uh, five lobe juicy pink thing in the middle. Uh, that's the uh, style and stigma. It's the gynoecium. It's a bisexual flower. And then, of course, you got that epicalyx. Those bracts that subtend, those long, narrow bracts that subtend the actual calyx, the sepals. God damn. I love I love desert hibiscus. Holy hell. And of course the palmate leaves because it's in the cotton family Malvaceae. Okay, here's a seedling of a tree in the poison oak and cashew family, Actinikita. You can see it's got that, uh, that those black spots on its foliage, uh, indicating that it uh, might contain Eurotiol, the... Uh, 
the allergic allergenic compound that uh, makes pump, some people break out in a rash. You know, maybe not, but a good third of that family, Anacardiaceae, the cashew and the mango family, has Urushiol in it. So I'm not going to take any chances. Ever since I touched that uh, that plant genus Comacladia, I was fondling it in the Dominican Republic. Broke out on a bad rash, had to go on a prednisona. But a uh, beautiful plant nonetheless. Very waxy, shiny leaves, quite glabrous. So this right here is a member of the buckthorn family. Okay, Ram, they say this is Carwinskia humboldtiana, but I will say it looks markedly different. Might even be, you know, might even be able to consider it as a different subspecies than the species that we got in South Texas and West Texas. The leaves are tiny, and the caterpillars are just loving this. And you got, you got bees going to it too. I've seen a bunch of pollinators on it and flies and with this shit, but. Uh, you know, it's not even flowering, so I don't know what they're doing. If it's emitting some, if it's got extra floral nectaries, it's emitting some kind of oil or what. But, uh, okay, important plant there, Mimosa Louisana, pink and white flowers when it goes off. Okay, just these typical mimosoid inflorescences. It's an important nurse plant for many of the cacti. And you got a species of Tillandsia, perhaps Tillandsia tequacana, uh, growing on, uh, look at how many goddamn trichomes that thing is. Oh, it just appears silver almost. You got to even bigger one back there okay and here's an interesting member of the mallow family this is Aenia fruticosa we get Aenia in South Texas too it doesn't look this showy doesn't have red flowers and it's uh, critically endangered because all of its habitat has been turned into agricultural lands or strip malls but this is pretty common down here Bitnerioidea subfamily of the cotton family Malvaceae just a look at it. Just you got the trichomes, of course. You got kind of like chordate leaves. You got covered in trichomes, those stellate trichomes. And then over here, we got another massive bocarnia. Massive bocarnia grassless. Look at this goddamn thing. Oh, nice turkey vulture flying back there. That's good. That the whole thing's got to weigh half as much as a boxcar. Oh, this goddamn thing smells incredible. Another mimosoid. Mario Sousa Acatlensis. The flowers on this are just so pungent. Oh my god. And look at those. Okay, so you really got to notice the nuances with the legumes, all right? There's no uh, with these damn mimosoid trees because they all really kind of look alike. You just got pinnate leaves with the shit. You got to notice this. There's no spikes. There's no spikes. And how many times pinnate are those leaves? It's such a clusterfuck. It looks like bipinnate. Yeah, with the distal. Small leaflets, leaflets maybe. I don't know, what do you think? A couple millimeters long each individual leaflet, barely that. And the flowers are white, they're white spikes. Also interesting to note, we got a, uh, a parasite. We got somebody hitching a free ride. Oh, I just broke it off. Anyway, there's Cytacanthus on here I wanted to show you. Cytacanthus genus of Lorenthaceae. Let's see if we can find it on the ground. Then. There you go, there he was. Little berry was on there too. He just germinated and he was about to, you know, uh, stick his hostorium into a... Uh, into this uh, mimosoid, into the Mario Sousa, and uh, I accidentally broke him off. But there's fine. There's another one on that Fulcurius. So this Cytacanthus, member of the tropical mistletoe family, Laurentheci, seems to be uh, a generalist. How about that? See that? There you go. There's that Cytacanthus hanging out, waiting to get pollinated by a hummingbird, parasitizing a, an ocotillo, a tree ocotillo, Fulcuria formosa. See that? Cool family, Laurentheci, much more showy than our temperate mistletoes. And here we go, here's a species of Hectia about the flower. A bromeliad trying to be an agave again. See, forming a clump, and then there's that uh, inflorescence coming up. Flowers won't be ready for quite some time. Almost looks like an asparagus. No relation, I mean, aside from the fact I'm both being monocots, but. And then there's those mean teeth. Trichomes and the leaf blades and very mean teeth. And it seems to be doing very well here, it's quite abundant. Okay, this is kind of odd to see this here, but this is a beautiful specimen of this species, and we're at the northern extent of its range right here. Agave potatorum. Look at those leaf blades. Look at that rosette. Look at the farina. Look at those marginal spines. Look at that little curly cue. Beautiful mixture of brown and red intermingling with the chalky white, bluish teal color. Agaves are fucking incredible, man. That's all there is to it. And then this right here, endemic to the Tehuacan Valley. This is Hectia rosiana, bromeliad family, bromeliaceae, same family as pineapples. Look at those little red speckles, red splotches on those mean toothed leaf blades. That's all I got for you this evening. Have a good rest of the day. Go fuck your